fantasy Korean dramas have been one of the more inconsistent genres coming from the world of Asia. While IPs like Heartfield Chronicles do well to present a gripping story, series like Melting Me Softly and Alice fumble with their ideas and fall into disappointing mediocrity. Netflix's latest fantasy drama, School Nurse Files, gets off to a lively and energetic start in episode 1. It's here we learn more about our central protagonist, Yoon Young. She's not like other children. Believing she may be born with an extra set of eyelids, her teacher and mother ask whether she's seeing the jellies again. It turns out she has a strange condition that allows her to see gooey trials left behind from living things. We cut forward to see Yoon Young is now working as a student nurse at school. In her cupboard are beakers full of pellets. Soon Guan is brought in with a sting on the back of his neck, which ends up being a strange heart-shaped jelly pendant, on his way to finding someone called Jellyfish. Taking the strange item out his neck, Soon Guan hastily leaves. When Yoon Young opens the door, a jelly happens to be right there in front of her taking the shape of that student. Armed with a plastic sword and a BB gun, she decides to try and take it out. Unbeknownst to her, something lurks deep in the basement. The camera swings down smoothly, and laughter floats up. In the school office, In Pio tries in vain to phone Il Gwang's sterilization regarding what's happening, but struggles to get through to them. As Yoon Young approaches, she notices a strange jelly-like aura around him. She enlists his help in order to find Soon Guan. Seemingly knowing something he doesn't, she mentions how the student is going to get a fever and start feeling ill. While he heads outside, Yoon Young notices red blotches trailing up from the basement. As it turns out, In Pio is in charge of the basement key, and the only one who can open it up. Eventually Yoon Young heads down and notices these strange jellies completely infesting every part of the room. Armed with her sword, she starts slashing wildly as these creatures burst into tiny pieces. When In Pio shows up however, she writes off her erratic behavior as Umba. In Pio and Yoon Young work together and head deeper down the basement. Of course, In Pio can't see what she can, as she swings wildly at the various jellyfish flying around her head. It turns out this aura she's seeing around In Pio is some sort of shield that wards off the creatures. Descending deeper down, the duo manage to open a locked door that seems to hold a strange rock. This may have been a site where a pond once stood. Despite Yoon Young telling him not to, In Pio lifts the stone as a shockwave descends across the school. Elsewhere, Soon Guan's condition worsens as he starts sweating profusely and getting a fever. He pleads with Jellyfish, his real name is Era, to stay, but she's called downstairs. While she's the center of attention, this shockwave suddenly causes all the students to start stampeding up to the roof. As they do, students climb up the fences. Giggling, they all watch as the ground shudders and shakes, paving way for something to start screaming maniacally from underground. Yun Young rushes up to the roof as the episode comes to a close. Armed with her toy sword, episode 2 of the school nurse files begins with Yun Young smacking the various students in the back. It instantly stops them from climbing as they drop to the ground. In Pio, still weakened from his trip down to the basement, struggles to catch up. Unfortunately Yun Young's sword starts to lose its power. A strange maniacal creature appears out the whole last episode and starts growling at everyone. After asking Aira to get her bullets, the monster suddenly screams to the heavens. All the students wind up pushed to the fences. With all hope seemingly lost, In Pio holds Yun Young's hand which seems to give her power. The gun materializes in her hand, and she shoots this creature right in the mouth. This time though it can't stomach the bullet, and it bursts into a million heart-shaped jellies that fall to the ground harmlessly. In the wake of this, reporter Kim Yoo Jin takes to the TV, and fills the rest of Korea in on what's transpired. Yoon Young however bemoans, that no one will know the truth about the jellies. Thinking back over the rock from that night, Yoon Young suddenly receives a strange leaflet under her door. The next day she speaks to In Pio about the school and wonders quite, why it was created in that specific spot to begin with. As they continue talking, they discuss two students called Min Yu and Won Su. Their inexplicable bond may be more than just friendship. It could be that they were born with jellies. Quite what this means, or how significant it is in the grand scheme of things, remains to be seen. Given their tether together, Yoon Young worries given she's seen people die from that link in the past. One solution could be to cut all their hair off given the jellies are obsessed with that part of the body. Aira overhears the two teachers talking, and offers up her services to help. Together, they manage to encourage Min Yu to cut his hair off, but it's not enough. While Min Yu and the rest of the students go cushion hunting, Yoon Young figures they need to go for the second part of their plan, cutting off the armpit hair. While this is going on, Yoon Young and In Pio start learning how to tie knots. 
They also start making a robot to teach the kids CPR. As Yoon Young folds asleep at her desk, she has a nightmare and awakens with a start after seeing the previous school president hitting her with the toy sword. What could this mean? What could any of this mean? For now, we're kept in the dark. With the CPR robot on her back, episode three of School Nurse Files begins with Yoon Young starting her first aid training for the students. As day turns to night, things suddenly descend into chaos in Won Soo and Min Yoo's class. Sixteen students start breaking down into tears while clutching the cushions. Yoon Young berates the students for going cushion hunting as blood starts seeping out one of their mouths. Yoon Young comes to the rescue with her sword, though, and manages to destroy one of the jellies. Snatching out the cushion, she heads outside and burns the notes inside about getting in university. Using this to her advantage, Yoon Young continues her plan to sever the bond between Min Yoo and Won Soo. Using Era, they bring the two kids inside the nurse's office and get to work rating them with their armpit hair. At least, that's what we're led to believe given the plan in place. In the morning, numerous jellies follow Yoon Young as she continues her first aid training in the different classrooms. As she does, the English teacher Mackenzie knows more than he's letting on. He walks down the hallway and sucks up different jellies in a strange rock he holds. Jai Haiyong is bullied by a group of students, forcing him to run incredibly fast on the treadmill. When he refuses to give up, a bag is put on his head, and the boy falls to a heap on the floor. Mackenzie arrives and breaks up the fight while comforting Jai Haiyong. He also gives him a way of getting revenge. Yoon Young patches up the boy's face, but remains suspicious around exactly what's going on. As we soon find out, Mackenzie gave Jai Haiyong four nuts to place in each of the bully's belongings as his way of gaining revenge. That evening, Yoon Young looks over the leaflet she receives surrounding happiness. She decides against paying for the entry fee, though, and instead focuses her attention on Mackenzie. Specifically, she wants to know whether he can see in Pio's force field or not. The next day, Jai Haiyim learns that the bullies on the basketball court all wound up injured following his nut incident. In their place, Gai Haiyong plays and hits the winning shot. His fortunes instantly change, but Mackenzie is not surprised by the last-minute winner. On the back of this, Yoon Young tells In Pio that he needs to fire Mackenzie. She tells him not to touch anyone else and to keep an eye on Jai Haiyong. After the basketball celebrations, Yoon Young confronts Mackenzie and tells him he knows who he is. She mentions the force field and he scoffs. It turns out he's doing all this for money and is another who can see the jellies. He's selling them to people and making a profit in doing so. As he drives away, he throws a jelly out the window which materializes into a big blob of goo. Thankfully Yoon Young is wise to what's happening and shoots it down. As Mackenzie drives off, this fight is clearly far from over. Episode 4 of The School Nurse Files begins with In Pio approached by one of the new teachers, George Young. She enters his room and the two start talking about the past. As they do, Georgia Young comments on how her back is hurting. As the students outside start laughing, she does too as things clearly aren't quite right here. Jai Haiyong sits before Yoon Young, who questions him about his new sneakers and relationship with Mackenzie. When he fails to answer, she suspects something is going on. Outside, In Pio is asked about the basement key which leads the duo to divide their time. Yoon Young is going to research more about Mackenzie by using her therapy group members. At the same time, In Pio is tasked with investigating Ilguang sterilization. Yoon Young goes looking in Mackenzie's apartment and finds numerous red flags. A map of the school is accompanied by a whole jar of the jellies he's captured. In his bedroom are a whole load of strange grass-like jellies too. When Mackenzie heads home, he looks over his room and notices the grass jellies seem to have withered and died. Cursing his luck, he tries to figure out what to do next. Yoon Young, however, shows up with spots all over her face, as she seems to have been poisoned by ivy. As she joins in Pio outside, Yoon Young feeds off the energy emanating from padlocks symbolizing love, and her spots disappear. She quizzes in Pio over his findings, but Ilguang was shut when he arrived at the office. However, they do find more information about the hole under the school. It turns out you can control this hole and if you do, it can bring great wealth and fortune to that person. This could explain what Mackenzie is up to trying to get underground. The next day, Yoon Young heads to school and notices a whole swarm of strange mites on the road leading up to school. As she heads in and tries to work out what these mites are, a new transfer student called Hai Min arrives at school. She seems to see these jellies too and continuously picks them up and eats them. In the nurse's office, she presents herself to Yoon Young and shows firsthand that only the stomach acid of a mite eater can stop this infestation. 
She explains how this is her area and because of the messing with the stone underground, they're all migrating closer to the school now. Following his run-in with George Yan earlier in the episode, in Pio shows Yun Young old photos of them. Those photos show various people with Ilguang sterilization jackets on the back. Yun Young continues to assist Hai Min though as she winds up with a nasty stomachache on the back of eating so many mites. Roddy brings Hai Min to the nurse's office where she admits to being genderless and not really real. As she mentions how she likes being a woman, Yun Young hands over a hot water bottle to comfort her. It's a tricky balance as Yun Young realizes she needs to collect up these mites, while at the same time knowing that Hai Min is the only one who can eat. The cold winter grips the school as we cut back in time, and see more of Yun Young as a child during episode 5 of the school nurse files. She's forced to switch places as rumors spread that she can see ghosts. Of course, they're not necessarily ghosts, but these strange jellies instead. Sitting in class, she struggles to concentrate as jellies infest the ceiling and distract her from her studies. At school she strikes up a friendship with Kang Sun who asks her about the food she's gobbling up. Apparently it helps ward off the jellies. Back in the present, Yun Young is approached by an old fellow student who happens to be Kang Sun. Only she can see him, though and invites the ghostly apparition along to her house to talk. Well they do, at school Hai Min is invited along to a trip. All of the students sing and dance that evening but it leaves the group completely exhausted for their studies. Yun Young comes up with a way of potentially helping Hai Min with her problems. She may be able to live longer than 20 years. During a car ride, Yun Young holds in Pio's hand in order to channel his energy. Together they drive up to a fish market, where their solution may lie in removing Hai Min's stomach so she can live longer. Back at school, Hai Min contemplates whether just to stay as a might eater to save the other students. It's tough for Yun Young to take given moments in her past involving jellies fading away. She mentions this story to In Pio, but remains convinced that she can help Hai Min. Yun Young heads around school collecting up the mites. Hai Min decides to go ahead with Yun Young's plan after all. After an exhausting day and night, Yun Young collects up all the mites and watches as Hai Min gobbles them all down. Back at her apartment, Yun Young speaks to the ghost of Kang Sun who tries to convince her to quit school. As he fades away, Yun Young tries in vain to save him. As we see from a flashback, he was inspiration for her to use a toy sword to thwart the threat of the jellies. When she awakens after the dream, Yun Young realizes she can no longer see the jellies. Episode 6 of The School Nurse Files serves as a mid-season finale for this very confusing fantasy series. Hai Min's surgery is a success, but the surgeons comment how strange it is that she hasn't got a belly button. In her stomach though they find a strange creature with a Chinese scripture on it reading Gooch. This means saving others in trouble. Only, Yun Young can't actually see this as she's lost her power. Hai Jun awakens and comments how she now has a belly button. In the car on the way back, she asks to travel outside her usual 5.38 kilometers radius to see more of the world. With her seatbelt firmly strapped on, the duo drive past that invisible area as Hai Jun is seemingly okay. Back at school. Min Yu speaks to Wan Su and contemplates whether the basement would be a good spot for their hideout. As they stand at the top of the stairs, their bond strengthens more than ever before. With the key in hand, they manage to break in. Sweating profusely, the pair sit in class and grin goofily, while Hai Jun fills in Yun Young on what's really going on. It turns out the school was built specifically for safe happiness, and students would jump in the pool constantly. Hai Jun saw this occur numerous times during her lifetimes. This feeds back into In Pio's grandfather who believed in laughter being the best medicine. Writing a letter of resignation, Yun Young heads back to school as a flood of jellies start flushing through the rooms. Yun Young can't see this of course, on account of her losing her powers, and heads home. The jellies seem to be feeding on negative energy, and with nobody there to stop them, they run riot. Roddy and Hai Jun are surrounded by a flood of laughter in the canteen. This slowly descends into chaos as the students fight. It's not just the students either, as In Pio heads to the school office and notices all the teachers starting to laugh maniacally too. With the whole school on the brink of insanity, In Pio goes in search of Yun Young, who seems to have been the only one to stop the infestation from spreading. Yun Young sees news online about numerous students being taken to hospital and tries to make sense of what's happening. In Pio heads to the fishing site in the pictures featuring Ilgwind, but finds it abandoned. Ilguang are not there, but it turns out Safe Happiness are fully involved in what's happening. Their rival group in Mackenzie is a member of their organization. They're responsible for the watering hole drying up too. But what about the school? 
Well, it turns out George Young is also part of this group which explains her sudden arrival and interest in Inpyo. Ilguang sterilization abandoned the school after Hong Jin Beam died. Inpyo holds the key to all of this given his familial past which is where safe happiness's interest falls. They need him because of his force field, and both Ilguang and safe happiness are locked in a bitter feud. It turns out Ilguang are actually the lovely ladies she's been frequenting for therapy sessions. At least, that's my interpretation of this, it's not really that clear. Yunyun confronts them and tells the leader she's not going to fight for them anymore. However, she tells the girl that she's needed as Yunyun heads back to the school. Sitting in the office alone, she calls in Pio in to talk. With her abilities gone, Yunyun decides to destroy the school by opening up the Apji stone and letting the jellies flow forth. Descending down together, Yunyun admits that she loves being normal and how she can't see the jellies anymore. In Pio, however, dislikes being ordinary. As they open up the stone, Yun Young suddenly gets her powers back and sees all the jellies floating around. As the ground starts shaking, Yun Young heads upstairs and grabs her sword from the office. It bursts into life as Yun Young starts weeping, she's not free from seeing the jellies after all. The school rumbles and shakes, leading to a massive jelly heart plunging down to the ground outside. As it melts away, In Pio and Yun Young walk hand in hand out the building. The threat is seemingly quelled for now. We then skip forward to find the school seemingly healed now, and the students back to full health. Roddy heads in and speaks to Yun Young in her office. She reveals that her mum can't see ghosts and asks for help. As Yun Young smiles awkwardly, she realizes she may not be alone in seeing these jellies at the last episode ending. The school nurse files has been confusing, to say the least. After six episodes it's still not initially clear surrounding what's going on. I'm not sure if it's just me or also stumping other people too, but I'm left with so many questions at the end here. So it appears like the school is hallowed ground and the scene for both safe happiness and Ilguang fighting over control of the basement. While it's brushed off that the jellies can change someone's fortune, it's not initially clear how or why. It's also a little inconsistent that some people can't see the jellies and others can't. Unless I'm missing something, the surgeons seem to have noticed the creature inside the jar, but no one else could thanks to Yun Young losing her power. That's to say nothing of the relationship between Yun Young and In Pio, which was given little time to flesh out and grow, despite some hints of playful romance earlier on in the season. With the second half to come, I'm not sure whether the school nurse files has done enough to keep people sticking around. I'll be sure to update these recaps though if other people can figure out what's happening, but this fantasy series has been both obfuscated and unnecessarily contrived. Whether the second half can improve or not, remains to be seen. The School Nurse Files is bizarre. It's a confusing, unnecessarily obfuscated six-episode fantasy series that never quite settles into its rhythm. Much like the jelly creatures this show depicts, there's no consistent form or explanation to anything going on. The result is something as weird as it is forgettable, showcasing a Korean drama that loses its way before it's even begun. The story revolves around a school nurse called Yun Young, who enlists the help of her fellow teacher in Pio, determined to search out what lies in the basement. As we soon find out, the school is infested by strange ghostly apparitions known as jellies. Only Yun Young can see them though, and she has the ability to ward off the creatures. Armed with a BB gun and a toy glow in the dark sword, she learns the school is actually a fighting ground for two companies, vying for control of this hallowed place. It's worth noting this before going into the show, as this final point isn't actually revealed until the middle of episode 6. Given that's a basic plot synopsis, it tells you all you need to know about the lack of explanation to what's going on here. Instead, the school nurse file stitches together a bunch of pretty well-shot action sequences with little rhyme or reason. The result is a somewhat disorientating and largely disproportionate series, leaving all its explanations for the final episode, but little reason to care when you finally make it to that point. If you want an example outside of Game of Thrones season 8 over the importance of good writing, this is it. You can have the best characters and special effects out there, but if the story fails to grip you or leaves big question marks then everything falls apart. Unlike the conventional 16-episode Korean drama format, this new Netflix idea of splitting a 12-episode show between 6-episode parts brings a whole wave of problems. You see, with a standalone show the writers are given time to flesh everything out and provide adequate explanations to what's going on. The story gives you confidence that it'll be wrapped up at the end, and, with a few exceptions, looking at you vagabond, delivers a concise ending in sight. 
Unlike Love Alarm, which was actually good, the school nurse files doesn't have enough to carry this one, and instill confidence for a second part. It's such a shame too because there's actually some nice ideas at work here, but they're never given the time to actually flesh out into a decent story. For example, partway through the show we learn one of the teachers actually has his own agenda. It's an interesting twist, but one that's written out the show after an episode and a half, never to be spoken of again until one throwaway line in episode 6. Another time, an early mission to sever a jelly tie between two students is successful until episode 6 when things are reversed, but no reason given as to how or why. These examples crop up constantly throughout the series, undermining any sort of world building given. These thin snippets of exposition are about the extent of reason to what's happening, and it's just not enough to make this anything other than an utterly forgettable proposition. It's a shame too because The School Nurse Files is a show I've been looking forward to for a while. Unfortunately, this series hits the dreaded Korean fantasy curse, joining Melting Me softly in the utterly forgettable category. Whether there'll be enough fans left over at the end to come back for part 2 remains to be seen. For everyone else, this is a tough selling.